All right, in today's video, I'm, I'm going to highlight the um, pitfalls of uh, giving in to your emotions. And basically what I'm talking about is buying high and then selling low. This is very often, this is what um, retail, unsophisticated, novice, uh, impatient, emotional investors do. So uh, Bitcoin had uh, quite a powerful run uh, recently over um, the last about eight, nine months, I think it was. Uh, actually longer than that. It's been well over a year because it started back here in October of last year. Um, and so if you're the kind of trader that gives in to your emotions and, and isn't thinking logically, these type of people get more and more bullish the, the longer something um, goes up. They assume that it's just going to continue to go up for forever. They start to get um, pie-in-the-sky targets, you know, Bitcoin to a million. Um, and then they, they, generally speaking, you start to see a lot of, of these kind of traders um, coming in and getting really bullish pretty close to the top. Um, and I saw this in Bitcoin um, in the last several weeks, and I tried to warn people. Bitcoin, first off, I'm pretty sure it's a busted bubble, which means it's probably not going to go above these highs for a long, long time. Um, sometimes it can take 10 or 15 years uh, for a bubble to recover and make new highs. Uh, you know, uh, we've got a good example in the NASDAQ. It topped in 2000, didn't make new highs again until 2016. So... <clears throat> um, it's probably going to be stuck um, in a trading range somewhere be below these all-time highs, probably considerably below it. And um, I suspect at some point it's going to go lower than, than this low at 15,000. It'll probably come back down into this zone here between um, five and 10,000. And, and it may churn for many, many months and, and maybe years before it's ready to challenge these old highs and, and break out again. So I, I warned, I tried to warn these people. Um, Bitcoin was pushing into a major resistance zone. This was the first real counter trend bear market bounce uh, once the bubble had popped. And so the, this was a major resistance zone and it corresponded with the uh, ETFs gaining approval and that was uh, almost certainly a sell, uh, sell the news event. But um, Traders were, were getting very, very bullish. They were rationalizing reasons why this, this time would be different and price was, you know, again, going to a million. And then, <clears throat> now let me show you just one of the Bitcoin miners. And before I do that, I want to point out, um, this is the 200-week moving average and you can see price was stretched way too far above this 200-week moving average again. You know, th this was the kind of stretch that is, uh, symbolizes a bubble but this is a, a stretch if you're in a long bear market, this, this is dangerous. And I, I think maybe these kind of traders don't actually pull up these long-term charts and they don't look at these, these moving averages. And so they're getting bullish here, where, whereas a professional trader would be getting very nervous when price is stretched this far above a, a moving average. All right, so this is, uh, this is one of the Bitcoin miners and they all have a similar pattern. Um, I tried to warn people as um, Bitcoin was moving up into those highs that the, the mining, uh, the Bitcoin miners were diverging. It was a warning sign. Um, they, they were not making higher highs and they were already starting to show some signs of e extreme selling. So as Bitcoin was pushing up into that resistance zone, the miners, many of them were already down 10 to 20%. That was that was a warning sign that you needed to pay attention to. And then, of course, last week we had a huge crash. And a lot of these are, are now 40 and 50 percent off their all-time highs. Well, not all-time highs, but the, the recent high here. And uh, Bitcoin is probably just beginning uh, an intermediate decline. So um, the, the lesson, you, you need to try and... Put your emotions aside. You need to look at these long-term charts. Um, you don't want to buy things that are stretched too far above the moving averages, unless you think that it's ready to transition into a bubble, which Bitcoin clearly was not. It already had its bubble. 
Now let me look at a couple other charts. All right, this is the NASDAQ. Um, it has this look. Uh, I would not short this because the, the administration is going to uh, try and pump a lot of liquidity into the markets this year to keep it up for the elections. I would not short this on the because there is a, I would say, a small to medium chance that this could transition into a bubble. Um, so I wouldn't try and short it, but it is stretched too far above this 200 week moving average. And I, with, you know, the, we had a, a huge stretch here, and that's what uh, triggered this regression event back down to this moving average. I would have liked to seen this moving or this regression uh, go quite a ways below the 200 week moving average. That would have been a better look. But the Fed, this is where the banks started to collapse, and the Fed started um, more printing and more liquidity um, into the markets and it recovered and um, I just I don't I, I don't think it's ready for a bubble phase and I have my doubts that it's ready to break out on a sustained level when you get a stretch like this and you don't get a um, uh, a let's say a comparable move to the the pendulum doesn't swing for far enough on the other side then it's you're probably looking at a market that's going to have to churn sideways for a long time um, and i suspect that may be what's going to happen here we're, we're moving into the period or the timing band for a four-year cycle low so um, stocks they may get a marginal breakout here but um, the the fed may not be able to keep this propped up this this year and we may have to come back down and test these October lows again. So we, we may be stuck in um, uh, a sideways churn for another few years before we can break out and get our bubble phase. But there is a small chance uh, that a bubble could uh, be ignited here. So I would not short the stock market. Now let me show you another one that everybody has, you know, all of a sudden has gotten really bullish on. All right, this, this is uranium. Now, I do think this is a long-term um, secular bull market, but um, unless it's time for this to transition into a bubble, which it's not, then th this is a dangerous market. Um, this has been going up pretty steady for almost uh, a year, about 10, 10, 11 months. And now we've got this big emotional surge here at the end this this is not um, generally this is not the beginning of something this is probably the end of something this is this is where all of the unsophisticated retail type tra traders that have missed the you know the, the first 10 months of this rally have all you know caught on that oh hey something's happening in the uranium sector and I need to get in I'm missing out and so that that's what creates this kind of a a big huge move after you know many many months of rally and this is usually uh, a topping type pattern this is this is a warning sign so again a professional trader very nervous when he sees something like this especially stretched this far and this is not the 200 week moving average this is 100 because there's not enough data here to get the 200 but you can see uh, above the 100 week moving average this is just insanely stretched above that and uh, this is at great risk of having a severe regression event that has to come back down and it and it's going to have that unless it's ready to transition into a bubble which again it's just it's just way way too early for a bubble phase in uranium so um, at some point this is going to have a, a very severe regression event back down to this moving average and probably below it and so you've got this big emotional move as the retail traders have all finally figured it out. And now after 11 months, they've let 11 months of the rally pass them by. Now they're ready to jump in. And uh, you don't want to be jumping in when these kind of people are, uh, are you know, jumping, uh, pull, pulling the trigger late in a rally with price too far above the moving averages, above the long-term mean. So you don't want to, you don't really want to chase these kind of markets. Uh, you might, you know, you might catch some of this. Maybe there's a little bit more and you're going to think yourself a genius. But then the same thing is going to happen to you that happened to the, the people that were trading the Bitcoin miners is you get caught. Uh, you can't control greed and then you get caught. So maybe, you know, maybe you even make 20 percent and you look like a genius for a couple of weeks. 
And then you get the big crash and you lose your 20% and then you lose 50% on top of that. So you end up losing a whole lot of money. So these, these are just not markets that, that uh, a smart, intelligent investor wants to, to chase. You might make a little money for a week or two, but you're going to give it all back and you're going to lose a lot of money. What you want to do is you want to find markets that have been stagnant for um, a while or a long time. Those are the markets that um, have the potential to start one of those uh, 11, 12, 15 week runs that can give you some really big gains um, and, and sustained moves. But, but for the average emotional unsophisticated type investor, he can't bring himself to, to buy these kind of markets because they're not doing anything. And he assumes that since they're not doing anything, they're never going to do anything. And, and just like the uh, buyer that might make a little money uh, at the top of a parabolic run before he loses it all, same, it's the same, you know, it's kind of similar, but the inverse in these kind of markets, you, you may get in too early and then you may have to um, survive, uh, you know, some weeks or even a month or two of just not really doing anything and you get frustrated. And generally what happens is, is you give up on this market and you go to chase that other market and then you manage to buy high and sell low and lose money. But the, the, these markets that aren't stretched way above their moving averages, these are the ones you want to look at. The ones that are, have maybe have been churning sideways for a long time. These are the markets that have the potential to give you those big multi-month moves. This is uh, silver. Um, I think this market, I'm on record, uh, um, 2024 is going to be the uh, year for metal. So at some point here, um, and I've gone over extensively in the premium reports and the SMT is still open to new subscribers if you want to join. But uh, I think there's uh, a pattern in play in gold and in the metals. So we are watching this, this market uh, very closely. I think it's getting close to ready uh, to give us um, a move, a sustained move for multiple weeks. And then here's another market that has a, a lot of potential, I think. You know, we've had, we've had our first big, huge run-up. This is oil, by the way. Big run-up, got stretched too far above the moving average, had to have a big correction. And I think it's probably forming a cup. And then at some point we'll have a probably a multi-month or couple-year handle on this pattern as well. Uh, but it's not stretched far above the moving average, but it's frustrating right now. So the average... Um, retail type trader can't bring himself to uh, buy or even you know be bothered to keep track of this market because it's just not giving him the instant gratification that he wants and so they're they're going to miss the the next move up um, this was a warning sign that something is is coming once we get done with this churning we're going to start to build out the right side of this cup and and i think you want to I think you want to be on board for that move, but it's going to require that you're going to have to weather some, uh, you know, a period of stagnation here where um, we're just not going anywhere. And that's the price you pay to, to catch one of those multi-month moves is that you've got to wait for the base to build out and then the, the move to, to begin. And sometimes, well, it is, it's just, it's frustrating for a novice um, trader, an emotional trader that's looking for instant gratification. These are not instant gratification markets. These are markets that are building the potential for really big moves. But uh, there's a price to pay to catch those moves is you've got to be patient. And most, most traders, most retail traders are not patient. And in order to make the big money, you've got to be patient. You've got to wait for these moves uh, to break out. And then you've got to have the patience to ride them for many months um, because it takes a long, long time for these moves to uh, complete and, and get into that overbought state like we're seeing in, in uranium and like we saw in Bitcoin.